When we think of wine, what usually comes to mind are places like France, Italy, and California. But out on the east end of Long Island, New York, a wine region is flourishing. From crisp, fruitful whites to luscious, robust reds, the North Fork region is becoming a serious proponent in the wine-growing community. Despite the region's success thus far, the North Fork is not an easy place to grow grapes. Harsh winds and endless rains continue late into the season, causing grape damage and disease. Many farmers have found ways around these conditions in the form of artificial chemicals. But while these chemicals may solve certain weather-related issues, they can be harmful to both humans and the earth. That's why one farm out in a small town called Mattituck has decided to become organically certified. Barbara Shin and David Page are the owners of Shin Estate Vineyard, a small farm where the well-being of Mother Nature is the number one concern. I farm organically and sustainably and biodynamically because in, in a certain respect it's a little selfish on my part because I don't necessarily want to work around agricultural chemicals that have been deemed not healthy for us. And also I feel I have that responsibility towards my vineyard crew that works out here with me. First of all, it's the ethical thing to do. It's very important not to poison the land, the water, and kill animals in the process of growing things. It's really important, ethically. You're not supposed to destroy uh, other people's habitats, birds' habitats, insect habitat, worm habitat. You're not supposed to poison the groundwater for the rest of us that want to drink it. You're not supposed to put pesticides and herbicides and fungicides in the soil so that they leach into other people's properties. I mean, it's not acceptable to poison the earth, to grow something. It's just not acceptable. It's the same as a carrot in the ground. It's the same as an apple growing on a tree, a cabbage in a cabbage patch. And I grow grapes and I just happen to be fermenting them after I pick them. And, and it is, wine is farming, wine is agriculture. A bottle of wine is an agricultural product. And so with someone with the philosophy like myself, I wanna make as clean as possible a product for anyone that's drinking my wine, including myself. The idea of having to wash fruit and vegetables before you eat them is a little scary, right? Because what is it that you're trying to remove other than toxins, poisons that uh, will make you sick? So we try to grow food that doesn't require that, that type of treatment. So Barbara's vegetable garden here is organic. And I don't think that I enjoy anything more than taking a little tomato or a berry or anything that's growing in the garden and eating it while standing right there in the garden. The, the care, that the extra care that that takes produces a better product. So we leave behind the moral, ethical things and we go to the next step of biodynamic or organic growing and that's the, 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 the quality that has to go into it because you can't cut corners, because you can't just spray some fungicide on something when there's a mold problem can't just spray some herbicide on something when the weeds are growing up. You have to actually pay attention to what your plants are saying and what they need and what they're doing. And in paying attention like that, you, you think through what's going on in your, in your soil. And in that process, you actually produce a better quality grape. I think I would describe uh, Shinnesay wines as uh, being natural, very natural wines. I find an energy in the wines, and I, I, I think most positively it's from the, the farming practices that uh, we're doing, that Barbara uh, is doing here, that we're all doing here, uh, the biodynamics. I, I think these, the wines here just have a certain energy that uh, you, you don't typically find in, in 
a lot of wines throughout the world. Maybe it's associated with biodynamics, but it's definitely something that's, that's happening in the vineyard here that I think is really special. Your responsibility to Mother Earth when you're growing something, you know, whether it's a garden or whether you're farming multiple acres, really means that we don't know what the history of this earth necessarily is and we don't know where the evolution of this earth is going. So by farming something, you want to keep that piece of land that you're responsible for as pure as possible. Farmers farm conventionally because they've been taught to farm that way. The marketplace teaches them to farm the way that they farm. Um, they get catalogs in the mail, they get flyers, they get salesmen knocking on their door. It's like anything else. Why do people eat processed foods? Why do people go to the frozen food section of the supermarket in the middle of summer when there's uh, a fresh food surrounding them wherever they go? They do because of the marketplace, and we need to relearn the way that we eat. We need, we need to relearn the way that we think about food and where it comes from. Other farmers farm conventionally because agricultural chemicals work. You know, they've been proven to work, they're scientifically proven. You can go in and you can get rid of a fungus and wake up the next morning and things look, are looking better and in two and three days they're going to look a lot better. Um, they've been proven that, that they work for the immediate problem that you're having on the farm. The problem is what are the repercussions of that? What happens, especially in this environment, where we have bays and other estuaries and big bodies of water like the Sound and the ocean and the bay, we have very shallow water table. And what happens is that when it rains, a lot of things you put on the soil to feed your crops are going to wash right through and then into our groundwater and into the bays and other estuaries. So when you're not putting a lot of chemistry down on the ground, you're basically just asking your soil microbes to eat as much organic matter as possible and then excrete plant available nutrition. So when you're dealing with a natural cycle of Mother Nature, it can be raining as much as you want or it can be dry as much as you want. Your vines are pretty much going to find nutrition because it's all part of a natural cycle. Conventional farmers, sustainable farmers, organic farmers, we all face the same struggles. So those struggles are, are you know, the only thing that really is, is, is different is how we, how we deal with them. Um, and and there's, it's often the case that when you farm conventionally and um, are looking for a solution for one particular kind of pest or fungus or disease, um, that uh, it, it seems to be out there, it seems to be easy, it seems to be a silver bullet, and then it fails you. Um, the same thing can happen in sustainable farming and organic farming. But we, do, we certainly all face the same obstacles. Uh, it's the same diseases out there, the same pests. Um, how we treat them and how we uh, decide to work with nature or in opposition to nature is, is where we really are separate or separate ourselves from, from the conventional farmers. In organics, um, it takes uh, much more thinking. Maybe that's the thing that really is different, that, you, that, that, uh, that we need to think so much more we need to really be involved in a day-to-day -day manner. I guess an interesting point with um, conventional farming is is that you know once you do get a disease sometimes the only thing that eradicates a disease on a grapevine is organic material. So a, a lot of times you know farmers end up using these corrective measures and, and they end up being organic materials. And the reason for, for that is that um, organic you know, materials that are allowed in the National Organic Program all tend to be you know, these eradicants. They don't give you a lot of forward production. Conventional uh, materials almost kind of play in a certain way on the fear factor, and it's always giving you forward protection, you know, just in case you get terrible weather, just in case um, you might have an outbreak of, of, um, of pests that you might not necessarily expect. A lot of it kind of plays on that. So sometimes I think that with conventional farming, material just gets overused because it's almost they use it as insurance. 
even though they don't need it. Barbara and David have recently applied for their organic certification, a process which requires careful attention to the farm and bans the use of certain chemicals such as pesticides. Farms applying for this certification must also follow the national organic standards set by the USDA, keep records of practices and materials used, and have annual inspections. When received, this certification will make Shin Estate Vineyard the first certified organic winery on the east coast of the United States. Certainly, I think it's uh, one major consideration for certification is uh, uh, the importance of, uh, you know, not taking too much from the earth, from the soil, uh, allowing what's natural out there to, to, to really uh, to thrive, because what's, out, what's natural out there is really what's translating into the grapes, and uh, it's that exactly what we're trying to capture, you know, what makes this vineyard unique. It's important to me to become certified at a certain point because I'm not in a region that there's a lot of organic wine growers. As a matter of fact, there are none. So I, I like to have that as something that defines us and lets anybody know that I'm not just pulling the wool over their eyes. So to become certified is, is, a, is a really big goal of mine, that yes, it can be done, it's, it's a healthy way to grow wine, and it makes a healthy product. It is important for us to become certified because it will then show other farmers that it is possible. So we can create an environment where a template is, is available. You know, it might not be perfect, it still will require each farmer to use his heart, use his gut, use his instinct, um, but more than anything else, you know, showing that um, we can certify a vineyard on Long Island as organic and biodynamic, it will create healthier wine for all consumers. Well, this region is really hard to do. Um, it's hard to grow grapes organically and biodynamically in this region because we have such climate change. I have a very good friend who's a winemaker um, who came out here from Sonoma and he basically said they shouldn't even be growing grapes here, they should just grow fruit trees. This is not a grape growing region. I said, why? He said, well, for instance, where I come from in Sonoma, it doesn't rain for four months. From May to October, or five months, whatever that is, it doesn't rain. So you can't have um, mold if there's no rain, if there's no, you can't have pests if there's no, you know, stagnant pools for, for, for insects to grow in. It's basically really hard to grow here. In any cool weather climate like this is on Long Island, you get rain and you get fog and you get dews in the morning, and any type of precipitation can cause problems uh, with fungus growing, either on your grapes or on your leaves, and that's why it's difficult to grow in a cool weather climate. That's why people like cheat, because there are pests here, so you need pesticides. There's, there, there are funguses here, so you need fungicides. There's mold here, you know, so you need you know, mildew sides, whatever that is. There, there's all sorts of reasons why it's so difficult to grow grapes in, in the eastern Long Island in the North Fork versus other regions in the United States. You know, the biggest thing with, with wine growing is that these vines start to grow in May. And we're not harvesting them until mid-September and mid-October and sometimes even till the first of November. So we're keeping one species of plant healthy for six months. And that's really hard to do. Uh, wine growing is, is very difficult because it's a permanent crop, the same as the apple tree and pear trees and berry bushes. And also, right now, these vines are setting their buds for next year. So if I have trouble in the vineyard this year, it can very easily roll over to the next year and the next year and the next year. It's sort of a domino effect. Well, the biggest struggle that we have is, is communicating with nature. Right? 
trying to predict what might happen next in nature. Um, and uh, farming relies on nature and mother nature to, to work with us. We're hoping that uh, we get sunlight. We're hoping that we get rain when we need it. We're hoping that we get dry spells so that the fruit can ripen. Um, so learning to dance alongside of nature is the biggest obstacle. But other struggles, I think, will be just um, the everyday questioning whether what I'm doing is real and what I'm doing is right and if I can accomplish what I've set out to accomplish. Uh, so, so in that sense, you can get a little lonely out here. Um, so sometimes I come out in the vineyard and I, and I feel a little lonely and other times I come out in the vineyard and I feel like I have all the company of these 25,000 vines that are out here. But it's tough, you know, and, um, and I watch in the other part of that experience is watching the same thing happening to Barbara, my wife, you know, and uh, who is uh, in charge of making sure that we have healthy fruit every vintage. And she goes through uh, a lot of pain during those kinds of experiences. And uh, it's, uh, but that, yeah, that's a challenge. Just working that out between us um, is, is the biggest challenge we have. It's hard to not be depressed as a farmer. It's really hard and you go through bouts of depression, mostly through fatigue and mostly understanding that you have absolutely no say in the matter. Whatever Mother Nature is gonna do, she's gonna do. And that goes really against human psyche and human ego. Um, so, there's sort of a romantic way to put it, and that is, oh, you know, it keeps you very humble. So on good days, you remain very humble, but on bad days, you get, you get depressed. It is true that um, farming organically and biodynamically on Long Island does not, there's no template, there's no, no worksheet to follow, there's no set of rules, there's no play-by-play -play that's handed to us by the powers that be. Uh, Barbara has had to create that template for herself. And um, that is uh, what being a farmer is really all about, is figuring out how to do it on your own farm. And um, she's accomplished much along this path. When you decide to farm in a very holistic way and a very sustainable way and using organics to, of course, be part of that, you change a lot on your farm. And here in this region where the sustainable movement is really just starting to take hold and we're really figuring out here at Shannon State Vineyards how to, how to farm organically, we've been doing a lot of things here that are very different for the region. Um, one thing in particular is this very intensive cover crop that's here right underneath my vines. This big amount of biomass down here on the ground that when it rains, it's gonna be very thirsty and it's gonna drink up a lot of rainwater that my vines would otherwise be taking up. The other thing that we've created here with this meadow is a 20 acre beneficial bug habitat. So if we would actually start walking through the vineyard right now, there would be thousands of bugs jumping up in our face and all over us, and those are all beneficial bugs that are very happy to be living right down here in the grasses, eating other bugs. So our good bugs are the bug-eating bugs, and the bad bugs are the plant-eating bugs, and the good bugs are gonna eat the bad bugs, and they're gonna stay right here on the farm and live down here in this cover crop because there's lots of other bugs for them to eat down here. But when I get bad bugs up in my grapevine canopy, they're going to come up, they're going to eat them, and they're going to stay right back down here on the farm. So that's one, or a couple different ways that we've uh, changed the way wine growing happens out here. 
And I think people are starting to see that it works and that it's actually a really nice working environment too for ourselves and for our farm workers. Cleaning the fruit as we pick. A lot of years is minimal cleaning, if maybe probably even none. But this year we get to clean because we had our friendly Hurricane Irene come through, which you can see what she did to our canopy there. <clears throat> Salt spray and general wear and tear because of the wind, and the nets, which are up here to protect the fruit from the birds really got um, beat up the fruit on the outside because of the wind and then after Hurricane Irene came Tropical Storm Lee which dumped tons of rain on us and we had berries split because the vines took up so much water even my cover crop couldn't uh, take all the water away so it can look a little gory on the vine you see a lot of brown berries but once you clean up the cluster, you have some really beautiful fruit here. So I've got about 12 people out here picking today and once you clean up that cluster it's gorgeous. Throughout the year it's just been really rough growing season, so much rain, close to something like an estimate of 12 to 14 inches in August, which usually we get four. So we've got mildew on the leaves too, so with the canopy starting to break down with the mildew and the hurricane, we just don't think that we're going to get much more ripening. We've already been through this block twice, cleaning out the clusters while they're on the vine. So now, while we're harvesting, we're cleaning them out one more time. Um, tastes good though. It's probably not as sweet as uh, might be in a super hot year, but um, the flavors are beautiful, so we're pretty happy. This is for our Sauvignon Blanc that we call first fruit which is a light, bright, clean Sauvignon Blanc, unwooded. So this will pretty much fit the bill for that. And I'm so happy to be harvesting. <laughs> I'm so happy to be out here picking the fruit, getting it off the vine. It's been a real gut-wrenching year. It's actually the hardest year ever anyone's ever had growing fruit out here. And some vineyards, I mean, I've got fruit. Some vineyards have lost 100% of their whites. There's nothing on the vine at all rotted. And, uh, other vineyards, I'm hearing estimates of 50% that they've lost. I'm trying to decide whether we're going to stem it or, or hold cl cluster approach. Full cluster press it. Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc, you know, you, it's a decision that um, you make at the crush pad pretty much every harvest. We haven't decided yet, but uh, we're waiting for another two um, pallets before we make that decision. We're set up to do it either way. It's not the ripest vintage. So maybe, oh, maybe cool cluster. Well, I mean, it's pretty clean, so it's not going to just tear up right. and just be a soupy mess on the on the table. So you know, if we go gentle, we'll get mostly the berries. ultimate goal for this farm is to have history for it and to be able to continue the path that we're on and 
for it to be able to be this type of farm forever. And yes, we're not certified yet, and yes, we have a long road to go to get certified. Um, but we're figuring it out, and we're really close. Our ultimate goal on our farm is to be a part of it for many years to come. So uh, that means having the opportunity to, to grow food, to make wine, to sit down at a dinner table and enjoy those things for the rest of our lives is, is the goal, to live long, healthy, and you know, prosperous life. Prosperous more in the sense of lifestyle than in the sense of um, a, a checkbook balance. I, what I hope to see in the future is a result of Barbara and David's work is everybody doing this. I believe that, that, that they should set the standard and that eventually all the wineries out here should be organic and biodynamic. It is not excusable to put pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides into the environment. I don't want to drink them. I don't want them in my wine. I don't want, I don't want them in the, oil, the soil. I don't want them poisoning the animals. So, I mean, what I hope that they do is they simply make it so that everybody realizes that in order to sell your wine or market your wine, people want to drink healthy wine. Wine drinkers have a moral obligation, an ethical obligation to, to, to preserve the earth. And that's the standard that Barbara and, and David are setting here. And I want to see all the other winemakers on Long Island. And I want to see all the other winemakers in New York State and all the other winemakers in, in America turn back their, their, their poisonous you know, methods and let's go organic and let's go even better. Let's go biodynamic. Let's build up the earth instead of tearing it down and destroying it. Let's leave this land for the future generations better than, than we found it, not worse. If somebody told me today that I had to be a conventional farmer, I would find that insurmountable. It would be the most difficult thing I ever had to do in my life. I think the real value is, is on the farming side of it, knowing that you're, you're doing something that, that you believe in and that's good for, good for the land, you know, good for farming. Here we grow wine. Wine is food. It's a very important part of our lives. But any opportunity that you get um, as a human being on this earth to grow something, to feed yourself, to feed your family, uh, is, is a way to connect to nature. And I don't know that there's anything more important for us to do than to, to connect.